Too often we gravitate to the tried and true, what's always worked in the past. But my loving challenge today is to see if we can discover that oddball approach, that, that, that unorthodox angle that might make all the difference in the world. Even if it's a little weird, sometimes those ideas are the ones that really matter most. Let's just pause and say, before we choose A, B, and C, is there a D? Is there an E? Or is there that option X? That oddball idea that no one had considered. Those, again, often carry the day. Quick personal example, I'm building my company and we win a giant project from United Airlines. It was a big win for my little shop from Detroit. They hired us to build an online sweepstakes. Grand prize, $1 million. The thing is that folks had to enter from a number of countries around the world that United served. So as mentioned, it was a tech company. We, we did software and hosting and security, but we also had to do the legal side of this, the rules and regulations. So we took the project and we get into the legal research and learn that in Brazil, which had to be an eligible country, Brazilian law dictates that a prize draw like this must be done on Brazilian soil. So we're thinking, sweet, we're going to Rio. This is awesome. But that faded fast because in Australia, which also has to be an eligible country, the mandate of Australian law is that a prize drawing must be done within the physical boundaries of Australia. This was not a small problem. This was a massive problem. I was a little company. I didn't have an extra million dollars laying around to give away two prizes. And I'm not about to run an illegal contest. I really didn't want to have to go back to my big client and tell them we're too stupid to take your business. So I gathered my executive team together. We spent all afternoon working on this. What can we do? How can we solve the problem? We came up with nothing. I went home that night, didn't sleep a wink. So the next morning, I'm in my office, and I hear a little knock, and, and a young woman walks in. We have an open door policy. Everyone's ideas are celebrated. There's no hierarchy. Anyone's welcome to show up. And she says, hey, Josh, you know, my boss was in that meeting with you yesterday, and, and he told me about this problem. And she says, I'm in the legal department, not, not usually where you think of the most creativity, nonetheless, okay. And she says, I have an idea. Her idea, I'm not kidding, saved my company. She said, let's do the drawing at the Brazilian embassy in Australia. Yeah, it's technically Brazilian soil, technically in the boundaries of Australia. It saved my company. The only thing I did, and the thing I want to encourage you to, to do, is I created an environment with psychological safety. She wasn't worried that she was going to be shot down or embarrassed by sharing her idea. We celebrated all the ideas, good, the bad, and the ugly. The truth is that the single biggest blocker of, of creative output isn't natural talent, it's fear. Fear and creativity cannot coexist. When we remove the fear, when we're in an environment that feels safe, creativity will blossom naturally. Exactly what happened in my case and certainly what can happen here. 